The following is a production of Woods Hole Oceanographic Institution. I have an itch to understand the ocean, and I love going to sea. Every time we go out there, we, we never know what we're going to encounter. You can't believe some of the weather out there. Days where we couldn't work on deck because we were just getting tossed around so much. I mean, it would be boring to just go out and put your instruments in a place where there's no flow or nothing particularly exciting happening. Let me just give you an example. So this is a sea surface temperature map. I mean, look at how beautiful these, these swirls are. The warmest waters are, you know, these red colors, okay? And you see all these cold colors here, these, these blue colors. These are the waters that are flowing down from the Gulf of Maine. And if you look at this, you can actually see where the Gulf Stream is. The Gulf Stream is the site where the most intense air-sea exchange of heat happens anywhere on the planet. The Earth as a whole is warmed at low latitudes by the sun, and at the poles, the Earth loses heat back to space. And so the oceans and the atmospheres have to work together to move that heat from low latitudes to high latitudes. Otherwise, the tropics would start boiling and the poles would freeze up solid. That's just at the surface. Then down deep, you've got the Gulf Stream, which reaches all the way down to the bottom of the ocean. And then you've got what we call the deep western boundary current, two incredibly powerful currents flowing right past each other at line W. The Line W program is trying to understand how the oceans and the atmosphere work together to cause climate variability on the Earth. The original idea was to name it Line W for Huey, but I said, why don't we name it after Val Worthington? A very colorful physical oceanography uh, scientist here at Huey. He, he was very likable. He had a magnanimous personality. I mean, I guess one lesson I took from Val is that you could have fun doing this work. <laughs> it wasn't always, always serious. He did an incredibly focused study around how does the Gulf Stream work and how does the circulation in this part of the Atlantic work. So our measurement program has two main elements. Hold tight, guys. Hold tight. Line up, please. One is a an array of moorings that are anchored to the bottom of the ocean. With instrumentation that span the water column. These instruments are out there measuring 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year. Go ahead whenever you guys are ready. Roger, okay. The other thing that we do is um, what's called shipboard hydrography annual cruises to measure the water properties basically from the southeast of Woods Hole almost to Bermuda. And we lower instruments all the way to the bottom that measure the water properties and the flow. Okay, coming up. Okay. And during the upcast when we're retrieving this package, we stop at up to 23 levels and capture 10 liters of water. Coming in. What this enables us to do is to get snapshots of the ocean circulation. Line W has been in the water now for 10 years. We were fortunate enough to receive some seed money support through the Ocean Climate Change Institute from the Vettelson Foundation. It began with a single mooring, which we called Station W. And then we leveraged those initial observations into a sustained 10-year measurement program with the National Science Foundation support. One of the things that we're trying to understand about the ocean circulation is how long does it take for the water that is at the surface in the seas around Greenland to actually move into the deep ocean and then flow past line W. And of course, we're trying to understand this in the context of human-induced climate change. And one of the places that we expect to see some impact is in the ocean circulation itself. You can almost think of it as sort of an early warning system that if we see a major climatic event happening at high latitudes, we might be able to say a few years later we're going to see a circulation change at our latitude that could potentially impact the position of the Gulf Stream and then atmospheric storms that uh, feed off the Gulf Stream. If we're going to understand changes in the future, then we'd need to have a baseline at the present time. And that's exactly what we're getting at Line W.
To learn more about Woods Hole Oceanographic Institution, visit us on the web at www.whoi.edu.